Milton, sit. Set. Milton, sit. Sit. Milton, sit. All right, bye-bye. gym we are about to go in that's boring um i'm going to do the incline treadmill which is what i do at the gym that is boring. My, oh, no that's not what i was talking about my uh husband will do the weights yes. <laughs> per usual this morning i have my key nutrients watermelon i put some of that liquid caffeine in there it mm -hmm. is delicious what do you have today I just had water oh, water yes. <laughs> he just has a water <laughs> oh and then a key nutrients packet. packet babe you have to hide your face like if you this. want to if you no i'm hitting my face yeah no pull it back a little there you see how it is yeah yeah there you go i know <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're gonna, you know, go in, spend about a good hour, yep. you know, get our fuckers on. on. Exactly, and then we'll be back in to check with you. Bye. <laughs> Babe, you're right. Get the. running with my husband lots of things to do today but I am finally back home and I have to eat this this is only like one-third of the meats that I'm having today but I got to get to work I'm not gonna be able to eat till like later this evening so the good thing is this is just some ground beef that I already had made so this is like five ounces of ground beef salt and pepper and then I've just put some dried cilantro on top oh yeah my taco seasoning too right if you want the recipe for my keto taco seasoning it's right there this is just delicious. I added more salt. Oh, that's amazing. Now granted, I added some cayenne. There's not cayenne in my original <laughs> taco seasoning recipe, but ever since I bought some, you know I've straight been adding it in here. So this has a nice little kick to it. But if not, you can put some hot sauce on this, but like, whoa, that salt sets it off. And then the cilantro is just like really aromatic. Like it adds some earthiness to it definitely not the freshness of fresh cilantro but it's it's tasty so i'm gonna sit down and enjoy this watch a good 30 minutes of the flash then i gotta get to work we're watching the flash you guys like for some reason i've just really been into wanting to find a show where there's like a zillion episodes and the flash meets that criteria there are already seven seasons on netflix and like the first three seasons of the flash have 23 episodes each like that's more episodes in the first three seasons than most shows get in the entire series nowadays right so there are tons and tons of episodes and i'm just making my way through them the flash is really silly it's just like black lightning but honestly like it's definitely keeping me entertained so i'm gonna eat this i'm gonna watch the flash mm. i'm gonna get to work and then i can't wait to show you what i'm actually having for dinner Okay guys, I am done with my meetings. Uh, and when I tell you, I have no business eating this late, but uh, that's where we are, right? So I am just now about to put my fish. Yes, two different types of fish. We have salmon and we have mahi-mahi, right? I'm multitasking, I'm patting my fish down. On the salmon, I have just used salt and pepper. Like that's that's all I've used. On the little mahi-mahi, boom, Old Bay. That's all I've used, right? And then we have an olive oil heated pan. And I am just going to, bam, lay that right there. And I'm going to, bam, lay that right there. So look, 
My pan's big enough to where I got two pieces of fish and they don't touch. Okay, so I'm gonna do it for seven minutes on this side and then I'm gonna flip them over. That's it. And so the moment we've all been waiting for, while my fish is cooking, I am going to make my famous homemade chipotle mayo. And as you can hear, it is sizzling away in the background. And I'm just gonna show you how easy it is to make. Like even in like the four minutes that's left, I can show you how to make this. Okay, so what you will need, regular olive oil. You can use avocado oil uh, or regular olive oil. I've heard extra virgin olive oil has too strong of a taste. I've never tried avocado oil, but I know that you can use it. Then we have the chipotles. It wouldn't be chipotle mayo without the chipotle peppers, right? We have vinegar, then we have yellow mustard, and then we have some cayenne pepper, but that's just to taste, right? So, so the first thing, oh my God, and an egg. I gotta get an egg. Boom, gotcha. So the first thing we're gonna do is a cup of olive oil. And notice, I'm making it in this container that is just big enough for our steak blender, okay? And the good thing is, this is also what I'm gonna keep it in too. Right? I'm just gonna put a lid on it and that's how I'm gonna store it. All right, a cup of olive oil. That's 240 milliliters for you counting. Gotcha. Okay. Next, gonna crack in the egg. All right. After that, it is the entire can. Yes, the entire can of Chipotle. Now, granted, you can put in as much or as little of the chipotle peppers as you want. Just know that it's going to change the macros, of course. Um, but the flavor is delicious. And honestly, it's not that hot, right? So I'm going to plop those in there. Those are the main ingredients right there. Everything else is to taste, right? Salt. To taste. I'm going to do about maybe like a teaspoon. Mustard, about a tablespoon, but it's basically just a squirt, just like mm, mustard. That's probably closer to a teaspoon. I'm gonna go with a teaspoon of mustard. Splash of vinegar. Now this will be a tablespoon. That's a tablespoon right there. And then however much cayenne pepper your little heart desires. For me, I like to put about a tablespoon in there. But once again, that is completely optional. So the cool thing about this recipe is that all you have to do is just assemble everything and then mix it once, right? That's all you have to do. So, got my steak blender here. I'm going to place it, I'm going to plunge it, if you will, all the way at the very bottom so that it touches. And then I'm gonna start it and I'm not gonna move it at all. And look what happens. chipotles here. I like the, the big chunks of chipotle, so I'm just gonna scoop those right back on in there, okay? Uh, we paid for them. Might as well get them in there. Look at that viscosity. I like it. It's a little thinner than traditional mayo because of all of the liquid from the chipotle, right? But I love that. It's like a drizzly sauce, and this is the exact drizzly sauce that I'm going to use on my fish. I can feel the heat and the smoke from the Chipotle. 
the straight up heat from the cayenne, and then the saltiness, and then everything else is just that creaminess that you would expect from mayo. Mm. In less than five minutes, and uh, this is what we call an F ton of mayo. Like this will last for like a week or two. After that, you probably don't want to use it much more because it is fresh, all fresh ingredients stored in the refrigerator. So this is the chipotle mayo. Let me know when you make it down in the comments because it's absolutely delicious. I'm going to get back to my fish and then I'm going to put this on the fish, right? And then I'll show you how it all comes together. Cheers! Oh. Let me turn the fish. Oh, look at that crust! What? Mm. Oh my gosh, look at that. Yes! 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 Okay. So this is my delicious, amazing fish. This is the mahi-mahi. This is the salmon. So now what I'm gonna do, y'all know how I like dried out meat. I actually break up the filet right in the pan just so I can get some more air and some more heat on the inside, right? I'm gonna do the same thing to the delicious salmon. <laughs> My pan's going on a little spin here, on a little ride. So I'm gonna let this heat through, and then I'm gonna add on my chipotle mayo. Okay, there's my chipotle mayo. There is my fish. So I'm gonna put approximately 50 grams of my chipotle mayo. And I love it so much, I put it on both of them. Okay guys, it is time to eat. You saw there in real time, basically how I made my fish. Thawed out piece of salmon, thawed out piece of mahi-mahi, put the mahi-mahi with some Old Bay, put just the salt and pepper on the salmon, and I let it go on one side for seven minutes. Like, it is basically impossible to overcook fish, in my opinion, right? Like, I, the thicker the crust, the more well done it is. Like, it, that is okay with me, right? So I put it on seven minutes on one side to let a really thick crust develop, four minutes on the other side, and then I broke it up, and you saw me just heat everything through with my chipotle mayo. You saw me make that chipotle mayo. Super simple, super worth it. Okay, this is the mahi-mahi. Mm. Salty, crispy because of that crust. The spices of Old Bay. Mm. Now it's time for the salmon. Look at that. The thing is, I love the flavor of salmon. Like, I love the flavor of the fish. The chipotle mayo is delicious. But with the amount I put on there, you can really still taste the fish. Oh, it's so good. Okay. Mm-hmm. Protein, fat, basically no carbs whatsoever, just from the spices. Oh, and from the mayo, because the mayo does have the chipotle peppers in it, which... The whole can does have a good amount of carbs, but when you split it up over all the servings of the mayo, it's not bad at all. So I'm gonna go eat this, watch a little bit more of the flash, and then I'll show you dessert, which is even more lit. Yes. And what do we have here? A keto chow booyah mug cake. Oh my God, look at all the steam. Okay, I actually want all of that to dissipate. Look how steamy this is. This is a chocolate keto chow mug cake. I just started making these a couple of days ago and I love them. Comment down below, have you ever made a keto chow mug cake? I mean, look, they got mugs specifically for mug cakes, right? Have you ever made one of these? What's your favorite flavor? Do you want to see me make like a recipe video or like how to make one of these? It's so easy or else you know I would have done it, right? And then I'm about to set it off even further than that. Don't forget, you can use the link in the description box below to get 10% off your keto chow purchase. Look at that steam, Lord Jesus. And first of all, before I set it off, I just want to show you like the outside is dry, you know, just the way I like it, but just barely the inside is still gooey. Like this is some lava cake realness right now. Mm. Oh, it tastes like a brownie. Oh! Mm. Okay guys, 
as you can see, I have a guess. Like, literally, in the time it took me to make the whipped cream. Yes! Which was the part that I was talking about. Remember when I told you I was going to set this mug cake off even more? It's with fresh whipped whipped cream. So all this is is two tablespoons of heavy whipping cream. And then I just used a splash of monk fruit. Just a, a splash. A, that much monk fruit, right? And when I tell you it's delicious, mom, you, you can only take the smallest bite like imaginable. Like a little bit of whipped cream, a little bit of cake. It has to look like that. Decent. Okay, that's decent. Okay. All right. Let's go. Mmm, man, that was warm. Oh, that's delicious. It is warm. Oh, my gracious. Right? So, did you taste? Okay, one more because I want you to like taste the saltiness. Of the mug cake? Oh, I did. Oh, okay, never mind. I didn't. Let me see if I can taste the saltiness. Oh, okay. Okay. Mmm. Yeah, now right. you taste the saltiness. Oh, oh God. Here's Richard. Okay. Yeah, they're doing. She came here. To taste the mug cake? No, no, no. For something else. But then she was like, well, why are you making a mug cake? Have fun. Okay. So notice the mug cake is salty, right? Correct. Keto chow by itself, the powder is actually salty because sodium is one of the main electrolytes, right? Shut up. So when you put it in the heavy whipping cream and the water, that's what dilutes the flavor and balances everything out. But when you make a mug cake, there is no salt. liquid, right? right? So all the salt is a lot more concentrated. So when I had these mug cakes, I was like, they taste good. I love the texture, but they're just like a little salty. Mm -hmm. They're a little salty right. for me, right? So I was like, what can cut through the saltiness, right? And so I decided to just whip up, literally and figuratively, whip you know, whip some cream. whipped cream. So, and that, one more bite. Make, I mean, just oh for science. God. No. For science. Yeah, toward the, yeah, the middle. Okay. For science. And that's just perfect. Ooh, yeah. I mean, how have I been keto nearly four years? And this is the first time I'm having this, right? Wow. For the amount of effort it took, spoiler alert, none, right? <laughs> I'll you know? Take it. And then to just immediately get a single serving, delicious, creamy, leaf flavored yeah. chocolate thing, like, you can't tell me nothing. You know, my next venture is to like try different flavors like maybe the chocolate mint maybe the chocolate peanut, peanut butter. butter maybe oh, oh the God. caramel macchiato yes. right you know Ooh. once again comment down below have you ever made a keto chow mug cake so let me know good. your favorite flavor but i'm gonna go eat this and stop talking my You're mom's not no my mom's not getting any more so hate to break it to you For all right science mm -mm. purposes mm. To, to be sure it's so good no okay bye guys say bye bye it's time to go to sleep and it's really late. I watched a lot of Flash, but the good news is there's still a lot of Flash to watch. Today was a really great eating day. From the ground beef, to the salmon, to the mahi-mahi, to the chipotle mayo, to the keto chow, to the whipped cream. What? Also, I did have a Zevia, so I didn't film that. I did have a Zevia. It was delicious. Drunk a lot of water. Today was a great day. This was an example of a protein sparing eating day. My protein sparing fasting days, once again, are mainly just chicken, but I did also recently get these Teton Waters Ranch uh, Polish sausages. And so I have, <laughs> so my macros on a fasting day are just 20 ounces of chicken and then one of these, they're really good. <sighs> okay, that's my cue. Overall, I had a great day today, feeling good, feeling good to be back on track, and I hope you can say the same. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next week. Bye. Shut up. I don't know what you're talking about. You're whispering at me. Oh, we're on camera. Oh, we're on camera. <laughs> Text your sister 2,000 years later. Stop making that I face. Love you so much.